Well, good morning, everybody. What a great day it is. The sun is shining, the birds are twerping, and Jesus is alive and well. The grave couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. He's been resurrected. The church is flourishing, and there's a move of the Spirit that's touching people. And uh, I know I'm so excited today to be with you today. I'm Neil Myers from Global Connections Church. And uh, on behalf of Joe and uh, Greg, we just want to say a big, big thank you. Nancy, too. Uh, she's just uh, so excited about what God's doing in the lives of people. And uh, just last week, as Greg was sharing with um, uh, Dutch Sheets, and Dutch was sharing about the move of the Spirit that's about to uh, come onto this land. You know, sometimes the discouragement comes around us and we start to say, ah, that's just Everybody's saying that or something like that. But somehow or other, we've got to be able to embrace what the prophets are saying in this age, in the day that we're living, because I believe that God is speaking loud and clear that there's about to come a deluge. Last night in our prayer meeting, uh, people had visions and dreams and things like that, and they could see like a great uh, a storm cloud coming over. And in that cloud, there was lightnings and thunders, but the, the word of God came and said, but God is in the midst of it and God's power will be displayed and uh, the lightning, the power of God strikes the earth that many will be touched and saved and delivered. Friend, there's going to come a revival fire and, and I want to be part of that. But it's, it's in the way we believe. It's in the way that we think. It's in the way that we've been doing church. And it's so easy uh, in this modern day that we're living in to become complacent to, you know, just be a church goer. And, and, and yeah, we love Jesus with all of our hearts, but I believe that God's seeking for more. He's wanting the church to be equipped. He's wanting to touch us by his spirit so we can go out and be the church and declare the resurrected Christ. And signs and wonders and miracles and things like that will happen as we proclaim and as we confess and as we push through. You know, I believe that there's a lot of things that we've got to push through in the hour that we're living. There's a lot of negative talk. There's a lot of negative things that are happening. But I want to say there's a lot more positive things. Uh, and uh, so that's why I'm telling this story that I want to share today uh, because I believe that God wants all of us to return to our first love. I'm not talking just to you. I'm talking about me too. I've got to come back to that fresh first love that I had, the excitement, the enthusiasm of being born again. And, and, and uh, people could see the difference in you. They, what, what's, what have, you know, what's happened to you? And uh, so, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Because I believe that our nation, Australia, earnestly needs to return to God. It needs a move of the Spirit. It really needs God to, to intervene. We need that power. You know, a lot of people today in, in the world and even in the church uh, think that God's a big pushover. You know, uh, God is a God of love. He would, uh, you know, he just accepts everything. I can do whatever I like and because he's a God of love and, you know, I can just do that and he'll just forgive me and everything's okay. Uh, I don't think so. I think that God really wants us to change and and be accountable for the things that God's laid upon our hearts. You know, there's a lot of giftings out there that have never, ever been fulfilled. There's a lot of promises that God's given to us that we've never, ever experienced, which I believe that's what God wants to do. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, God, some of our concepts have got to change. We've got to change some things. Uh, I believe that God is a God of blessing. I, I believe that if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 says that, and um, amazing words, amazing promises, only believe all things are possible. Uh, I want to ask the question today, what do you believe? Do you believe for revival, or do you believe for just for a rapture to get you to heaven? Or do you believe that we're going to see an amazing move of God? Because you see, you see, when God spoke to Moses, he said, I've heard the cries of my people, and I'm coming down to deliver my people from Pharaoh. And, you know, oh, praise God, that's a wonderful thing. But then God said, but Moses, I'm sending you. And we've got to realize that God wants to do what he wants to do through you and me. So I've got to change. We've got to change. You see, whatever you believe, that's what you will be. For as a man, what a man thinks or believes in his heart, so shall he be, whether we believe right or wrong. If I believe right, well, I'll receive the right reward. If I believe wrong, I'll get the same, I'll get a wrong decision. I'll get a bad decision. If you believe that you're a failure, guess what? You most certainly will be a failure. And you'll find it very, very hard to succeed. But if you believe that God wants you to be successful, uh, well, that's it. 
you might think you're the black sheep in the family and that's, that's, your, that's your bit. No, I believe that God really, really, really wants to do a work in our life. You know, there's some cultures that say, if you point a bone at them, they'll die. And, and, and that happens. They, they go away and die because they really believe in, in that, that that's what, what's happening. There's other cultures that believe that, you know, if they want their crops to be successful, they've got to uh, shed the blood of, uh, of their ch uh, children or something like that. And, and people uh, kill children. They offer sacrifices of children to please gods. And, and, you know, and they, they think that they're, they're doing right. They're, they're doing wrong. And, uh, but I believe that God wants to get into our heart. We, we believe in a God who is a God who created us in his own image and in his own likeness. Uh, God has uh, protected us, wants to protect us from our enemies. He wants us to triumph over them. I believe the book is full of amazing stories. And, and God is not a pushover. He, he is very, very jealous. He's very, very careful to watch over his word. And, and I believe we, the church, have got to come in under the, that truth. And as we come in under that truth, then the power of God and the anointing of God can come upon us and equip us. Friend, I'd love to say today that, you know, that I'm perfect, but I'm not. But I serve a perfect God that says, if I do certain things, he will do certain things. If I can repent and if I can ask God to forgive me and if I can draw upon that power, draw upon that anointing, well then, you know, God can do what he says he will do. In 2 Chronicles 28, verse 24, Ahaz was king over Judah. And Judah was God's people. God's people, of, that Judah means praise. And, and, and God loves praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. God loved Judah. They were his children. They were his kids. And, uh, but it's, it's, something happened there. It says there that Ahaz was king over Judah, but he did evil in the sight of God. In other words, he provoked him to anger. He provoked him to anger. And because of that, it's not, we, we read that, you know, that God handed them over to this and God did this. And the, now what really that, I believe that means is that now God has to take his hand off us. Because the Bible says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And that's not just saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. My confession is my walk with him. It's the way I walk. They, the way I walk and act speaks louder in God's ears than what I'm saying. Because we can say a lot of things and then go and act and do quite contrary, quite the opposite. To, to what we're saying. We can speak the words of, of, or the language of religion and not live in the reality of it. And so God has to deny us. He has to deny us the promises that he's, that he's made to us, that he would protect us and that he'd watch over us. Friend, friend, it's very, very important for us at this season that we're living in to come back to God and to, and to sort of embrace him and, and fall in love with him again. Fall in love with Jesus again and, and let his love and his mercy and his power flow through your life. Then in uh, 2 Chron uh, Chronicles 29, there's another king, Hezekiah, and he did what was right in the sight of God. He pulled down all the, all the enemy's things. As, and, and let's read it. It says, King Hez Hezekiah did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God. Hezekiah set himself to seek the Lord. Friend, if ever there's a time we should be seeking God. I'm not talking about religiously. I'm just talking about God. I want to know you. God, I, I, I ask you to give me an ear to hear. Help me, my God. Open my eyes that I can see you. God, I'm coming after you. I want to know you. I, I really want to know you. If you talk <clears throat> in sincerity to God, God will listen to you. It was just a religious thing. God says, your prayers weary me. But I believe it's a time there. And it says that he set himself to seek the Lord. He did it with all of his heart. And God prospered him. And it goes on in Chronicles uh, 32 verse 1. And it says, after these deeds of faithfulness, faithfulness, 
the king of Assyria came down to attack him. The king came, of Assyria came down to attack him, to try to take over the land. And, and you know, God's people were there. Here's Hezekiah. He could have said, oh God, and, and I've heard and I've said it myself. Friend, come on, let's be real. Let's be real. Oh God, I've done this and look what's happening to me now. Why has this happened to me? Why, after all, you know, I've served you faithfully and look, look, I've got a flat tire and you know I'm in a hurry. Oh, look, this didn't go the way I thought it would go. Well, that didn't happen the way I really thought it would happen. And Hezekiah could have said, Oh God, I've served you faithfully. I did all these sort of things. I sought you with all my heart and I did all these sort of things, but oh God, why, 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 why? Friend, I want to tell you, we've got to get the whys out of our life. And we've just got to seek God and say, God, I don't know, but in this, Lord, I don't know, but I believe that you're for me, and if you're for me, who can be against me? And we know that the king of Assyria, he came down and he challenged and, and he spoke words and he tried to discourage. I want to tell you, that's the spirit of the enemy. And the enemy would come against you today and, and, and many times over my life anyhow to try to bring discouragement upon my life, to try to discourage me and, and uh, tell me that I'll never make it or different things like that. Different times in my life when you, you feel like, oh, where is God? But friend, I want to tell you, God says... I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. And somewhere or other, we've got to latch ourselves or harness ourselves to what God says and not what I feel. So this king of Assyria came down and, and, and he was doing stuff there and he was saying, oh, you know, I've destroyed all these other nations and their gods didn't help them and your God's not going to help you. And, you know, I suppose a lot of people were listening to that. And when people listen to it, they start to say, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, and they, fear starts to rise up within them and they, they start to murmur and they start to speak against the leadership. I want to tell you, if ever there's a day we need leaders, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled leaders to rise up, this has got to be the hour. This has got to be the hour. Uh, and, you know, here is, uh, so uh, Hezekiah, he, he's, he did something. It says that he, he prepared for battle. I, I don't want to be negative here, but to be honest with you, every morning we get up, we've got to prepare ourselves for battle. The Bible tells us to put on the armor of God. It doesn't tell you to do that just so that you can go to a fancy dress ball. That's very, very real. We need the armor of God. We need the protection of God because you see there's an enemy out there that's seeking after you, that's seeking whom he may devour. He wants to bring discouragement, disappointments. And the little things that come around our lives, he starts saying, see, see, God didn't really help you. See, God didn't work with you there. And, and, and so if we take that on board, well, then we'll fail. But you see, God said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. I won't leave you wandering around in the desert. I won't leave you wandering around hopeless. I'm, I'm there with you in the battle. And so Hezekiah prepared his people for battle. Come on, he sounded the alarm. I, I believe that God is sounding the alarm today, gathering his armies, gathering his people together. He's bringing the leaders. It says there that uh, he pre prepared for battle. He gathered his leaders and commanders, and he gathered the people and said, listen to what he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria. Friend, there's a lot of things happening today. We've got so many things that are going on. We've got the virus and we've got the riots and we've got all these different things that are happening. But I want to say there that we've got to hear the word of the Lord in this time. Don't be discouraged as the enemy pours out his fury and his wrath. As he comes against the church, as he comes against the people of God, as he starts to say lies and things like that, and he starts to pour out that fury and wrath. You've got to stand still and you've got to hear the word of God. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. And they said that they were outnumbered, really. They were outnumbered so many. There was a multitude with them and they had every reason in the natural to say this is the end, there's no, it's hopeless, there's no hope. For, and then he goes on and says, for there are more with us than with him. Amen. 
just like Gehazi, the man of God. And the man of God said, there's, and Gehazi's voice, as his eyes were open, he said, there's more for us than be against us. There's more for us than be against us today. It says, and it goes on, it says, for with him is the arm of flesh. With the enemy is the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God who will help us and fight for us in this battle. He will fight for us. If you, if you read on, you find uh, that the king of Syria did everything that he could. After that, even he did everything he could. Hezekiah and, and the prophet Isaiah and the son of Amos, they, pried, they prayed and they cried out to heaven. They prayed, friend, it's a time to pray. It's a time to seek the Lord. I'm not talking about religious prayers. I'm talking about God help. When I first got saved, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what to do. The person that was trying to lead me to Jesus, I don't think he really knew much about it either. He asked me to pray. I, just, I was only getting saved. I just, they, the, the people at the front made the altar call and Nancy and I went out to get born again. And another lady with us. The three of us that night got born again. Oh, God, we made a commitment. And this young fellow, they said, take him outside to the back room. He didn't have a clue what to do. I don't think that there was anybody ever saved in that church before. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, he's out there. And this guy asked me, he said, he said have, you, do you, have you prayed? I'm, I'm an unbeliever just getting saved. I said, oh, yeah. I said, I've often prayed to catch a fish. But uh, that's about all. And he said, well, pray now. Man, that was true. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a clue. But I shut my eyes that tight that a big tear started to come out. <laughs> I just shut them so tight. And I, and I, and I think I said it so loud. I said, God, help us. Amen. <laughs> That's all I knew. God, help us. Amen. And he did came into our lives. He started to lead us and guide us from that very moment. Started to reveal himself to us. It says there that they began to pray, began to seek God. They, they let the presence of God get around them, their lives. Verse 21, it says, Then the Lord sent an angel. Oh, I love this bit. I love this bit. bit. And the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, every leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shame-faced. Oh, I like that. I like that. He returned shame-faced to his own land. And when he, gone, when he went into his own temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with the sword there, destroyed him, wiped him out. You see, when we pray... When we pray, when we pray, it, God starts to move. God, nothing, I, I don't believe anything is really done. Sure, God is supreme and God can do whatever he likes. But without prayer, prayer is the vehicle that God comes in on. Prayer ushers in the Spirit of God. In Jeremiah 33, verse 3, it says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto him. P please, friends, in this hour, in, in all this happening in our nation, this is an hour to call upon the Lord. God will send angels. Amen. God will send, send ministering spirits. God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you could imagine or think. I heard a story just yesterday of a man in India a great man, I know him very, very well. He, he's a, 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 an amazing preacher, amazing pastor. And uh, in India, they're feeding 1,500 people a day. And as they, they, they package all the food up in little boxes and they, they take them out to this, this area and they feed these people. And they had their 1,500 uh, cartons in the back of this vehicle. And they go to this place, but there's not 1,500. There's 2,000 people there. And they thought, God, and so they prayed over it. And they said, God, this is your business. Where about your business? It says that they served the people. They served the 2,000 people. 
out of 1,500 boxes. And when that finished, there were still 70 boxes left. And they thought, oh God, you know, there's 70 boxes left. And so on the way home, they said they came and there was like a, a, a little bus stop or whatever it was there. And as they pulled up, there were 70 hungry, starving people there. And they took the 70 boxes out of the back of the truck and fed them. And on their way home, they went home rejoicing. You see, God is an amazing God. Nothing is too hard for our God. He can do whatever. He can feed 5,000 with a few fish and a couple of loaves. And that's the God that we serve. He said, he wants, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. You see, there's a, a, a war that's raging today for the souls of men and women. Satan is pouring out his fury and his wrath on the nations of the world. We're looking at all the riots, everything that's happening today. It's, it's atrocious, it's horrible, it's people, innocent people. Famine, drought, earthquakes, floods, mudslides, wars, murders, riots, horrible things. Countless thousands of good, innocent people are tragically lost. Good people blame and turn their backs on God. They think it's God. Call unto me and I will answer you. We know in 2 Chronicles 7.14 it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Australians don't like that word humble. We, sometimes we can be proud and arrogant and think that, you know, but friend, it's a time to humble yourself. God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I guess everything that I've said today is combined in those, that little verse of Scripture there. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. A lot of people don't like that word, as I said before, humble. They think it's a sign of weakness. I used to think that, but then I found out that I was about as tough as custard, that I was really, really weak, that I was addicted to cigarettes and nicotine. A, a cigarette that big had me bound. I couldn't quit a cigarette that big. I was tough. No, I was weak. A cigarette that big had me in its grip. I was addicted. All our wives have got to do to us is start to tickle our earlobe and we're, we're gone. <laughs> yes, dear, what do you want to do? O oh, King of heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Please, please, Lord, send the Holy Spirit for the sake of the children that are being lost, devoured, aborted, raped. Yeah, young people that are being taken into drugs, pornography. May your kingdom come to our nation, Lord. Would you come in Jesus' mighty name? Lord, bless Australia. I want to just finish with this. I believe with every fiber of my being, the Holy Spirit is at work in the hour that we're living in right now. Doing things that we may not be able to even be aware of yet, but he's working. He's working mightily. And he might be working on your life today. He might be touching areas of your life that need to be touched. He might be touching things in your life where, where you've sort of slipped into something there and you're, and you're locked. See, I was, I was addicted to a cigarette. There may be other things. There's other things there that we can be addicted to and we slip into something. For many years of my life, I needed the Holy Spirit. I tried to give up smoking many times in the natural. But God came. When I got saved, I smoked for a period of time. 
I was a smoking Christian. I didn't realize that God wanted me to be on fire, not just to have smoke. But then one day I was convicted and the Spirit of God touched me and I haven't had a cigarette since. The power of God will deliver us. And I, like that's just one, that's my life. There's other areas that He's delivered me in that I'm not going to talk about today. But I, I just know that God wants to, for us to humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways and things that are wrong in our life and turn to Him. He's at work in our lives. He's touching us. He's knocking on the door of your life. Would you let Him come in today in power and authority? Father, we just lift up the name of Jesus today. I lift up every person that's listening to this. Father, I ask you today that you would touch us as you're touching me even now. Lord, as you're touching me right now, Lord, I sense your presence over my life, drawing me to you, even closer to you, drawing me closer, draw me close to you. Never let me go, Lord. Never, never let me go. Oh, Father, we want to worship you. We want to love you. Lord, we want to be your people. We just don't want to be a, a, have a sign over us, but Lord, we want to be full of your power. We want to be a demonstration of your love and your mercy. And so, Father, I pray that people today would, would just allow you to touch them. And Father, if there are people here today that don't know you, mighty Holy Spirit, would you, would you come and would you convict people today of their need for Jesus Christ? It's got to be a work of the Spirit. I can't convince people. But Holy Spirit, you can. Holy Spirit, you can. You can come even now and convict people. Lord, you can heal people. You can deliver people. You can set people free. Lord, I lift people up to you. Lord, I pray that people today will call upon you. Even as I, Lord, that night when I was getting saved, I said, God, help me. God, help me. There's somebody here today that you might want to be healed. You say, God, would you heal me? God, I believe that you've already healed me. I draw on what you've done. And Lord, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you today. Have an amazing day. Have an awesome day. And uh, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And he loves you with a passion. He gave his life for you. He wants you to overcome. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to rule and reign with him. As you come to him, he will come to you. Amen. Amen.